dear students and viewers today i am with the poem listeners it is written by walter de la mere today we are going to understand the poem previously we had a text and the paraphrasing of that this very poem whereby i try to make you understand this poem and also i gave you the urdu translations for this for that lecture you can go you can search on the uh, whatsapp group of higher secondary school will come e content or also you can log in to my youtube channel that is ayub dilbar and you can find it there to aaj jo listeners ka dusra hissa hum shuru kar rahe hain isme aaj hum walter dila mayer ki is poem ko understand karne ki koshish karenge pehle humne iski text ko padh liya hai aaj hum text ko chhod kar ke ye dekhne ki koshish karenge ki jo poem hai iska basic kahan se hai aur kya hai so let us go first of all let us know something about the author iske bare mein pichle dinon mein maine bhi aapko thoda sa bata diya tha na today walter john de la mer was an english poet short story writer and novelist he is probably best remembered for his works for children for his poem the listeners and for a highly acclaimed selection of subtle psychological horror stories among as them satan's aunt and all hallows the author was born on 25th of april 1873 at charlton london united kingdom or you may call it england the man died on 22nd of june 1956 at Tickenham United Kingdom he was educated at St Paul's Cathedral and he has won one award that is Carnegie Medal now this was something about the author if you are asked you must know something there is his photograph is also given there you can see this see this man through the photograph now so far as the text of the poem is concerned i have given you earlier the text of the poem is there anybody there said the traveler knocking on the moonlit door and his horse in the silence chomped the grasses of the forest's ferny floor and a bird flew up out of the turret above the traveler's head and he smote upon the door again and second time is there anybody there he said but no one descended to the traveler no head from the leaf fringed sill leaned over and looked into his gray eyes where he stood perplexed and still now you see is anybody there said the traveler knocking at the moonlit door and as horse in the silence chirped the grasses of the forest's ferny floor now these four lines suggest that a traveler has come and knocked at a door of a house the house is situated in a forest it's in line 4 you can see it was forest is ferny floor means the house was a lonely house it was situated in a forest and a traveler comes there and he knocks at the door and it was night because the door was moonlit had it been day we could say sunlit door no it is moonlit door therefore we can understand by the second line that it was night and the traveler has come to a house and he is knocking at the door whereas he has let his horse to go and chop the grasses and the horse horse is chopping the grasses on the ferny floor means uh, small plants are there on the floor of the forest and the horse is chopping the grasses and a bird flew up of the turret above the traveler's head and as soon as he knocked at the door there a bird flew out of the turret turret means a 
um, place in a house that is nearly near the roof and the bare bird flew over the traveler's head and he smote upon the door again a second time and what the traveler do do he smote means he hit hard upon the door again a second time is there anybody there he said and he inquired a second time if is anybody is there and he has come to meet him meet them but no one descended to the trailer no head from the leaf fringed sill leaned over and looked into his gray eyes where he stood perplexed and still but no one came down from that very house did not descend from that house or could not even um, could be seen from the window sill because the sills were also they that the leaves the leaves had covered the sills of the house and the house was gray okay and sorry the and the man he was with gray eyes and he was perplexed he was confused and he was silent but only a host of phantom listeners that dwelt in the lone house then stood listening in the quiet of the moonlit that the voice of the world of men now you see these four lines say us that there were listeners but there were no men there were phantom listeners there were ghosts they were listening to this man who had come from the world of men and he was they were dwelling in the house that time the phantoms were dwelling in the house the ghosts were dwelling in the house they were living in the house and they only they were there in the moonlit moonlit the moonlight they were they were listening to the the travelers voices stood thronging a faint moonbeams on the dark stair that goes down to the empty hall okay and they were there where the moon beams were going deep into the house through down the stairs and to that very hall that was empty now and they were hearkening in the air stirred and shaken they were listening hearkening means they were listening and they were way they, they they didn't they they didn't that the um, voices were shaking the voices were stirring moving from one to the other but they were not moving at all but the lonely travelers call and at he felt his heart their strangeness and the traveler also felt that if there are no people they are not answering my call maybe this house is occupied by the ghosts now and he felt their presence their stillness answering his cry and he felt as if their stillness their calmness was answering his call while his horse moved cropping the dark turf near the star the leafy sky while his horse was there the traveler was busy in calling the people knocking at the door and the horse of the man was there because it is an unnamed person his horse was chopping the grasses he was cropping the grass he was cutting the grass and just filling it to his to his field it was under the leafy sky it was under the leafy sky for he suddenly smote on the door even louder and lifted his head and now he smote means he hit harder on the door and told them tell them i came you tell them that i had come i had kept my promise and no one answered that i kept my word he said and that now the traveler was addressing to the phantom dwellers the ghosts and he was telling them to tell the dwellers of this house the men of this house who were dwelling in this house that if they come back and they find they tell them that he had come but you did not answer him and he had kept his promise that i kept my word never the least stir made the listeners but the phantom listeners they did not even move a small small movement didn't they do they didn't stir they didn't move though every word he spake though every word he spoke fell echoing through the shadowiness of sitel house and it was echoing in the house it was reaching to the house and the listeners were and the phantom listeners were listening to the call from the one man left awake and they heard his foot upon the stirrup and that very man the traveler who was the only man awake at that very time in the forest his calls were being heard and the phantom listeners heard him stir up moving up and the sound of the iron on stone and they were also seeing the sound of hoofs that that was the 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 iron the iron that is uh, that is that is fixed to the hoofs of the horses and when it falls on a stone it gives a sound 
of like the tuk 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 like that this sound and how the silence swept softly backward when the plunging hoofs were gone and when the man was gone from the house when the man was gone far along uh, towards the um, dwellings of the men and the silence came back to that very house this was something i tried i have already explained this poem in urdu in my first chapter in, in, in my first lecture now this was from english to english it is paraphrasing now let us come let us see what is this poem the listeners about now what is this poem why has this poem been written the listeners describe as a traveler who has come to knock on a moonlit door in an eerie unknown place the traveler finally leaves but the listeners remain the theme of the poem is the place of a man in a universe which is far greater than he and which he can neither connect with nor understand now the poem was and you see it is this this poem is all about a man who is coming from the place of from the world of men and he reaches a forest there is a lonely house he has come to meet somebody some people there he had kept a promise to meet them he just knocks at their door he goes there but there is nobody the traveler finally leaves from that very place but the listeners are there the phantom dwellers are there the ghost like people are the ghost like creatures are there and now it is that <clears throat> it is so far as the theme is concerned we may also say that it, this is a place of men in a universe which is far greater than the man who himself is there the man himself his his echoing sounds are not heard in the vast vast universe we must see and which he can neither connect or nor he understand and in the universe a man a single voice can neither be heard nor could be understood and he can neither hear them and nor he can understand them now let us come <clears throat> why did walter de la mer write this poem the listeners walter de la mer published the listeners in 1912 as the title poem of his second collection of poetry it was this was also a poem in his second collection of the poetries he published it in 1912 and the title of that very collection of poems was the listeners and it remains one of his most famous pieces of writings and reflects the author's fascination with mystery and the supernatural because this poem deals with mystery it deals with metaphysical things it deals with supernatural things so therefore this poem it is a dreamy poem it takes you to the world of dreams it is it, there is horror there is eerie in it you can find and i have already told you in my first lecture that this poem was judged as the second best in 1912 as the second best after rudyard kipling's poem if if won the first prize and this poem won the second prize now let us come to the summary of the poem i will be reading it for you in english because it i don't feel any need to go for urdu because i have already explained the poem to you in my first lecture an unnamed figure the traveler knocks on the door of a house in the moonlit light and asks if there is anyone inside the traveler's horse grazes in the quiet forests while the traveler waits for a response a bird flies out of a small tower on the house and over the traveler's head the traveler knocks again more forcefully and repeats his question no one comes down from the house to meet him however no one even leans out of the window the sill of which is covered with in leaves to look at him he stands in place puzzled by the lack of an answer inside the house is a group of ghostly beings these listeners stand in the moonlight as they listen to the human voice coming from outside the ghostly beings crowd again around the staircase on to which moonlight streaks as the quiet atmosphere in the empty house is disturbed by the sound of the traveler's lonely voice 
outside the traveler senses a strange presence in the silence that meets his question his horse undisturbed continues to graze in the dark forest the sky above full of stars and obscured by trees the traveler suddenly beats on the door once again even more loudly and before he then calls out asking whoever is listening to pass on a message that no one answered him when he came to the house but he kept his promise the listeners don't make any motion in response to his, this the trailer's verse reverberate through the dark empty house coming from the only living person around the phantom listeners hear him jump up onto his horse and then the second then the sound of the horse shoes short shoes on the stone path as the traveler rides away the silence of the forest quickly returns as the sound of the horses forceful riding fades away this is the summary of the poem it i must recall you that this poem is spread over 36 lines and out of these 36 lines we can see only there are characters there is only one character that is living character that is the traveler and there are phantom listeners inside the house who are listening to this man's calls from the outside world and the how this is the summary of the poem goes now let us see what is the rhyme scheme of this poem i have already told you that there are 36 lines in this poem the rhyming lines are 2 and 4 you can find line number 2 and line number 4 are rhyming line number 6 and 8 are rhyming line number 10 and 12 are rhyming 14 and 16 and so on means you can see even even lines are rhyming 2 4 6 8 8 isn't it like this 2 4 6 8 10 12 16 according to you can say 18 20 22 24 24 like this so and so on up to 36 all the rhymes are masculine rather than feminine that masculine means they they sound they sound men like in masculine rhyme you can see in a masculine rhyme only the last syllable of one line rhymes with the last syllable of another line okay in a masculine rhyme only the last syllable of the one line rhyme with rhymes with the last syllable of the another line means the last syllable of line 2 and the last syllable of line 6 only one syllable only one syllable rhymes only one syllable rhymes yeah. you must say syllable for example if i say you matlab dug or dot or calculate say for example these are the words now what is the syllable syllable division cal k late cal k late so these are cal k late you can find like this cal cal k late you can find like this so in feminine rhyme the last two syllables of one line rhyme with the last two syllables of other line as in ringing and singing ringing and singing you can find like this now let us see what are the literary devices that have been used in this poem now as far as the form and meter is concerned the poem has no consistent meter it is not based on meter as you say for example the, if you read in your second the first poem in your textbook that was the daffodils isn't it you can see there i was i wandered lonely as a cloud that floats over high over vales and hills and then all of a sudden i saw a ghost of old and deaf for dills a crowd of old that likes this that is based on meter this poem is not based on meter is anybody there listening oh tell them like that you if if you can see you see if if we go back to the uh, first first line or second line for example is there anybody there said the traveler knocking on the moonlit door 
and his horse in the silence champed the grasses of the forest's pearly flow. You can see this is not based on morally on meter. You can see there are so many words in first line and so many in third line. And it's in door and flow, door and flow, or or and or and or. These are the last syllables. This is masculine. Or and or, or and or. Oh, accordingly, you can see here add and add, head and head in add and add. You can also see sin and ill, ill and ill. These are the, the these uh, lining uh, rhyming things which I have told you like this. <clears throat> so I was telling you that there is no form or uh, meter in this poem. Though certain parts follow particular metrical patterns, the poem is composed of quartet. Quartet means four lines. Personification. The listener could be said to be personification of the silence and emptiness of the house or of death. Now you can see personification is, I have already discussed it in my previous lecture on the figures of speech that personification means when you find human characteristics in non-human things. Human characteristics in non-humans. The listeners are phantom listeners, they are not humans. But you see they are silent and side subtleness, simple and death and house and all other things. Okay? Following an A B C B A B C D rhyme scheme you can you can find in this. Okay? Now Accordingly, alliteration. Alliteration, I have already told you when there is repetition of the first first word, uh, the so sorry, the first letter in uh, and the second uh, like this, say su sa s um, su sa so many serpents searching there. Su sa so many. Uh, su, 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 su. Su sa so many like this. There are many examples of alliteration in the poem, uh, like this. And he felt in his heart their strangeness. He felt in his his heart. You see, he his and heart. This is alliteration. He her her her. Accordingly, there is also onomatopoeia. Onomatopoeia means this is when we use sounds. Sounds in a poem. I have already discussed this in figures of speech. Onomatopoeia means now she chomped this chop 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 when the horse was chomping the grasses. Smote means like this knocking. Accordingly, crop 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 like this echoing woo and then you get ooh, echoing so plunging hoops. Tuk, 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 tuk. These are onomatopoeia used. These are the words you can see chomped, smote, crop, echoing, plunging hoofs. Sorry, I have separated it hoops here. It is it it should be hoofs at double o f s hoofs okay so these are onomatopoeia these are the poetic devices this is the mm, these are the examples of onomatopoeia used in the poem now metaphor metaphor you know when we have a direct comparison to something a host of phantom listeners a host of phantom listeners phantom listeners you are directly host the word you are referring as a metaphor host is a metaphor Voice from the world of men. Accordingly, voice, voice is a metaphor. Silence surges softly backward. Silence, host, and voice can be then told that they are metaphors used in the poem. Now, let us do some solved questions on this poem. Where did the traveler go? Why? The traveler went to a lonely house in a jungle. Where did the traveler go? Yeah, as it is evident from the poem, the traveler went to a lonely house that was situated in the jungle. Then why did he go there? He wanted to meet somebody there. He wanted to meet somebody there. Now the next question is, why did the traveler feel confused? It has not been, uh, I, I should, uh, I ought to have colored it in red too, but I will be doing it inshallah. What did the traveler, why did the traveler feel confused? The traveler felt Repeatedly knocked at the door of the house, but got no reply. The traveler repeatedly knocked at the door once, twice, thrice, but there was no reply. Then no response from the inmates of the house confused the traveler. Even he felt frightened when a bird flew over his head from the turret. Okay. Now who were the listeners? What did they listen to? The listeners were phantoms or ghosts. 
they listen to the repeated summons and the calls of the traveler but gave no reply but they gave no reply now the next question is what did the traveler feel about the ghosts what did he tell them the traveler felt the strangeness of the phantom dwellers he felt them listening he told the phantom listeners to tell the people whom he had come to meet that he had come to and kept his promise so i am just repeating this because i find an error over here the traveler felt the strangers strangeness of the phantom dwellers he felt them listening he told the phantom listeners to tell the people whom he had come to meet it, it should not be met whom he had come to meet that he had come and kept his promise now next question is what type of atmosphere is created in the poem there is an atmosphere of awe and mystery the poem advances the silence and mystery deepens the poem advances and the silence and mystery deepens the poet succeeds in emphasizing the supernatural atmosphere in the poem i think that i have tried from my side to understand to make you understand this poem hope you will do best okay bye